The Law by Jim Butcher is the latest entry in the Dresden Files as of July 2022 and is a novella that takes place directly after the events of Peace Talks and Battleground. I would say debatably, depending on if you think changes had more impact, the most substantial moment for the Dresden Files up until this point. And I personally had some pretty heavy criticisms of those two books, and so I was really interested to see what the law would bring to the table as I hoped it would fill in some of those areas. I really wanted to see that specific chunk of this overall story further flesh out. And maybe it was because of that expectation coming in, I wanna be fully transparent and say that, but I was overall quite disappointed by the law from Dresden Files. But before I get into all the criticisms, I would like to sing some of the briefer praises I had. It is really fun actually seeing Jim Butcher narrate this story. Story. I personally don't think his performance comes anywhere near that of James Marsder's, but it's still a charming and fun thing to see an author step on in and narrate his own book, and it provided a very different tone and interpretation for a lot of the characters, specifically Bob, hit different. Ain't that right, Bob? And I also thought there were a couple moments of humor and strong characterization throughout the law that were either interesting or engaging, or just in a nerdy way, nice to see your character show up and be in a room and feel like Marcone or Dresden and just have that oomph to him. Unfortunately though, aside from that, I was disappointed by the law as a standalone story in what it told and as being the follow-up, the first taste of Dresden we are getting as fans post peace talks and battleground. But let's get into the former first. The law brings to the table a villain I found violently underwhelming for Dresden to be going up against after the events he just had. I get the choice to have Dresden go up against someone who is essentially just a person with a lawyer, and I'm going to keep this spoiler free, because Jim Butcher, in my opinion, my interpretation of what he's trying to do narratively, is fold Dresden back into something that feels like it could have been happening much earlier on in his journey. And that's actually a really cool idea, especially if you take a lot of the ways Dresden has grown grown and changed as a character, this world has become so much bigger, and try and fold it back into that kind of smaller early series case. That could be a fascinating story, but I don't think it could necessarily be pulled off in a novella format because we want more time to really build up a villain who could feel like a threat, who the reason they are a threat is because it's something that Dresden's magic can't directly solve, and of course his own morals prevent him from solving if he could. But the law doesn't take the best of where Dresden has grown, and instead in a lot of ways just feels like a regression back to many any of the weakest elements Dresden had in its beginning that even the most avid fans like myself often point out as criticism of the series as a whole. There is specifically a female character who is kind of just feeling like one of Jim Butcher's worst interpretations of what an agency-filled female character can be, and aside from a couple what felt like pat-on-the-back moments from the narrative of like, yeah, you're strong too, they were just a damsel in distress for Dresden to save in the worst way possible. There were a couple lines from even Bob the Skull that felt inappropriate and just out of left field and how they were hitting me on my palate. And I don't mean to come across like, oh, holier than thou, you know, sexism and writing, any of that. But anyone who has seen how Dresden's handling of female characters has changed over the years will identify this as something far more similar to what the series used to offer versus where it has grown to offer now. But then we have to look at where the law falls into the wider series of Dresden as a whole. And this is where this novella, to me personally, digs itself into an even deeper hole. Because right after Peace Talks and Battle ground, the next taste of Dresden I get is obviously going to be incredibly important because we get to see how all of these amazing, emotional, life-altering events of the last two books are going to be directly impacting him. And the law essentially ignores all of it and chooses to just focus on the story that's happening in the pages. And so what ends up happening is it feels like a lot of the things that just happened to Dresden don't feel like they're affecting him that much outside of the couple moments where the narrative decides to tell us, hey, Dresden is being affected by this stuff, but we're not going to address that now. Wait for the next book, which is just in its own presentation, just feels like nothing substantial can happen or evolve with anybody. And that's the case. Dresden, despite being at his most vulnerable to us, the reader at this point, despite being in a position where we should be seeing him just have all kinds of reactions, we get a Dresden who's essentially frozen in stasis, which you have to even then credit the book for doing because obviously it's gonna be one that a lot of people are going to be skipping because it is just a novella, doesn't have the same hype and marketing as the next big full Dresden book. So just from the meta of the series alone, it's the correct choice to make, but it's a very dissatisfying choice to make 
for this specific point in the Dresden Files. I would say most disappointing to myself personally was I was hoping one specific element of grief that Peace Talks and Battleground should have specifically put deeply into Dresden could have been thoroughly explored with him, maybe even just have the law be an exploration of grief for Dresden that doesn't necessarily need to him be getting over it or anything like that, but just better set up his mental state for the next book. I think that's what I was really hoping this would be and take that into account. Maybe that's why I'm being extra disappointed by the law. I'm very willing to admit that this is a subjective review, but having something that should be essentially Dresden's most emotionally potent point be reduced to just a couple throwaway lines that again, feel like the author is stalling so that he can tell this other narrative, which feels incredibly unnecessary is inherently dissatisfying. But I do want to end with one more positive. One thing the law does actually provide for the wider Dresden world is a look, not necessarily at the aftermath for the characters of what happened, because that needs more pages to be addressed. And obviously that's being held off for what's to come, but instead we are quite well framed for what exactly has happened to the world, as well as how some of the things that are trying to avoid the supernatural, because obviously that can't come out to the public are being covered up with. And it's kind of nice to see that the ramifications for Chicago and people as a whole aren't going to be entirely swept under the rug. There's rebuilding projects, there's all this stuff going on, and the people themselves seem a bit more tense and skeptical about believing whatever they're being fed because of how monstrous of what happened in Peace Talks and Battleground was for just the city, the world as a whole. The one thing to criticize that with though was the law establishes again, a lot of this is being explained away with some parallels that could be drawn with the real world and the pandemic, as well as just terrorist attacks and things along those lines that have happened in the real world. Forget the criticism I was about to level because I remembered a supernatural event on the level of what happened in Chicago would knock out nearly every single recording advice in Chicago. So no, there wouldn't be tons of video evidence for what happened online and duh, I can't believe I put that criticism in the video. That is not something that is unbelievable. It's actually quite well explained away. I drew a parallel to like when you see one of those fake videos of like a floating city in the sky and the obvious way to debunk it is like if that was real, there'd be hundreds of videos of it. But no, Dresden's actually done away with that because there could maybe be a couple of recording devices that would survive, but not nearly enough to be the overwhelming number that would provide the absolute evidence of the supernatural needed. So I was wrong. Caught in my own 4K. So for me, this latest entry in the Dresden Files is falling a bit short. It's my least favorite of the short stories we have seen released for the Dresden Files. And overall, I'm going to be giving it a four out of 10. It's not awful or something that is terrible, but I would say for the larger Dresden story as a whole, it is skippable. It does not do anything substantial for the characters. And aside from some kind of interesting framing of the world, you definitely are not gonna be missing one of the best villains or setups Dresden's had to take down in the history of the Dresden Files. In fact, I would probably say it's the least engaging we've seen in the Dresden Files so far. But hey, that is just my subjective review. I am still a massive Dresden Files fan, and I will probably be in the larger scheme of the series, kind of just forgetting about this entry as a whole, and it's not even soured me towards the Dresden Files in a substantial way. It's just an entry that's remarkably forgettable, so I'm gonna forget about it. But let me know your thoughts on the law in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you wanna support what I do here. And specifically, let me know what you thought of Jim Butcher's narration, because while it wasn't the most gravitas immersive thing that we usually get for the Dresden Files, it still had its own charm. And I just really like seeing an author step into the booth and try and give their direct interpretation and voice to their series. That meta element is actually what I enjoyed the most here. And personally, I do hope we see Jim Butcher pick up more smaller entries for the Dresden Files and give him his own voice. I think it's fun, but have a good one, y'all. Peace.